Hi guys, welcome back to Paint 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 Reviews. I'm Brian Dickinson. And I'm Devin Gall. And today we want to talk about Interstellar. Interstellar is a science fiction epic about a group of scientists who use a newly discovered wormhole to explore the far reaches of space in hopes of finding a new home for humanity as the Earth is on the brink of death. Me and Devin were obviously both really excited to see this movie, being that Christopher Nolan had just done Batman and Inception, and pretty much doesn't strike out. On top of that, it was going to be a giant IMAX experience, so I was expecting some type of experience. Well, actually, man, for me, I did not know that I wanted to see this movie until very late in the game. Like, honestly, the first several trailers that came out did not do anything for me. They didn't excite me, and they didn't exactly put out any, you know, this is what the movie's about type stuff, where, you know. So I was really confused about what it was, but in the end, it came down to, well, Christopher Nolan's never really disappointed me before. So as a fan of his, I'm going to go anyway. And not until I, you know, had heard the really, really positive stuff about it did I get really excited for it late in the game. Yeah, I can actually say that that was kind of the same thing for me. Like, the trailer just looked like Matthew McConaughey overacting and didn't really show a whole lot, which I'm happy about now that I've seen the movie. Any slight detail in the trailer would have given it everything away. Yeah, I just didn't, like, it was good not to know too much, but... My only expectations for it being good were that it was Christopher Nolan. Like, I just was trusting that because of him it would be good. Yeah, and also a lot of props go to his brother, Jonathan Nolan. He's an amazing writer, and I really love everything he does. And, and with his brother's direction, the two go really well hand-in-hand hand together. Well, you know, originally this wasn't uh, to be directed by Christopher Nolan. Right. Yeah, I had I had read that as well. It was an idea that was floating around for a while, and Jonathan got locked onto it, and uh, kind of enticed his brother with it. I've seen it twice already in the first two days. It made that much of an impact the first time I saw it. It was such an experience, like an emotional journey. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I was really devoted to the characters. The visuals were incredible. I just loved the story, even though to me it got a bit wishy-washy at the end. But still, as a whole, it's an experience of a movie, and it's definitely worth seeing. And the actors were all incredible. Even the little redhead girl was, like, amazing. Man, I have to I have to agree on all points. Like, when I walked out of the movie, I, the first thing I said was, well, that was brilliant. You know, I would recommend it to people. There was a, there were some discrepancies with it. We'll obviously talk about later, but, it you know, it really resonated with me. It was a really emotional journey. I saw it really late at night, at like 11.30 at night, and I didn't know that it was a three-hour-long <laughs> movie. You know, even after sitting through it and watching it, I did not feel like it was three hours long. I was in it the entire time. There was not a slow moment for me. Very well paced in most areas. And I think you're right. I think all of the actors did great. I mean, Matthew McConaughey is singled out for me as the best, best of the, you know, the cream of the crop there. The most emotional part was when he's watching the videos coming back from the planet and he's like weeping watching his family grow up without him because so much time has been taken away from them. Oh yeah. And he's like crying and I actually cried a little bit. I don't really cry at movies all that often, but I did on this one and it was so hard to watch. There's a lot this movie did right. As a huge sci-fi fan, the science fiction, the theories of the time dilation and stuff like that of, you know, the nearest planet to a black hole, time will go slower because of the gravity, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff was really well done and really easy to follow for newbies coming into this type of thing. So I feel like that was really well handled. I think I maybe shed a tear once or twice. There were a few really like heart wrenching parts, and definitely when he's talking to his family and they're all aging, and he's like younger than them as they're like aging past him. And I think, like you said, one of the strong points is that you can pick up what's happening. It breaks down physics and the sci fi ideas to a layman's term. Though I will say, the one thing I told people coming out of this movie is like you said, there's some hang ups, but those didn't affect me because it's such a strong movie. But you definitely have to be able to suspend your disbelief and be willing to just watch a movie and enjoy a movie and realize like at some points Christopher Nolan is basically just making up physics. 
yeah i mean the whole there's a whole scene where they go into a black hole and inside a tesseract that encompasses space time essentially you know a fifth plane of dimension where you can see time as as one long thing which is a really huge sci-fi idea that's been done in a lot of movies but nobody knows that that is true so christopher nolan's imagination really came in there i mean that's really for me where it got wishy-washy was like the whole bookshelf scene where he can move books between dimensions and like i mean the watch thing wasn't really a problem for me but like him moving books off a bookshelf from things away the watch thing and the book thing probably bothered me the most. I was saying, the book thing bothered me. I was just getting at, like, at least the watch isn't as big of a difference that he's making. Like, it's a small little, like, okay, maybe he could feeble that watch hand. But I can't believe that he can move a book from another dimension. Well, then, but the watch thing for me is like this, man. He's sending hugely complicated quantum physics information through Morse code. How the hell long is it going to take him to, you know, dot dot? dash that shit until she has all the information forever man she would have been old before you know she would have died before all that stuff got to her he goes into the black hole and becomes part of like some weird space-time thing but the whole movie they hammer into you like the science of it like they hammer it into you this is why this is this way because you know science and then at one point Anne Hathaway is like I have to believe love can transcend space and time yeah i had a big problem with that i was like oh come on right and then at the very end that's what they throw their chips into like your love for your daughter transcends space and time and i was like come on this is what you're gonna throw all your cards in on this whole time you've been bashing my head with science and facts and all these great theories and now you're like no it's love my main problem with that scene was that they discount Anne hathaway as a character who's really strong the entire movie except for that one scene where she has this emotional breakdown where she's like, I don't care about science. This is love. That's the wishy-washy stuff you're talking about. I don't care about that shit. I want, <laughs> I love that science fiction and all that other stuff they're doing. Fifth dimensional beings and and going through black holes, that that, sh that stuff is awesome. Honestly, man, that's the only hang-up of the movie is the end. Like, for me, the movie could have ended where they all get caught in the gravitational pull of this black hole, and then the black hole shoots them out on the other side of time. You know, basically where the movie shoots him out. They, they shoot them out right there, and then they just say, oh, well, now we've been through a black hole, we have all this quantum data. The whole ending wasn't constructed as well as the rest of the movie. Right. Well, the main problem was the story is set up in such a way that there can be no other ending. There can be no other possibility than the, the love transcending space-time bullshit. And that's the biggest weak point. Don't go all in on that. Like I said, just go through the black hole. Hey, we saved Earth because now we have this quantum data and you don't have to do all that dumb stuff. Um, how surprised were you with Matt Damon? Were you expecting that? No. <laughs> in the movie theater it's completely quiet and he sits up out of this hyper sleep tank thing and i just go out loud is that fucking matt damon right now i know i wasn't expecting it he wasn't in any trailers or anything i was just like oh shit matt damon's in here and now he's gonna be an asshole yep i mean his role in it's pretty you know predictable you're like well you know they're putting a guy up there who everybody likes everybody thinks matt damon's a great guy so naturally the surprise here is that they're gonna make him an asshole they foreshadowed it from the second they landed on the planet that he was an asshole like it was pretty obvious things were gonna go bad but he actually did a pretty good job with his role that was nice his character was nice predictable but good the entire movie has, I just want to point this stuff out, great writing, great direction, great music, by the way. Oh yeah, wasn't that amazing? A completely unrecognizable Hans Zimmer who does really loud drums and strings and horns, and this time he did this ominous, creepy organ music the entire time. It was brilliant. Um, I think for me, the best part about it is the fact that Christopher Nolan took some serious homages to... Kubrick, Spielberg, and uh, the movie The Abyss, James Cameron. I mean, the, all the visual stuff, the, the filming style was definitely Kubrick. The visuals were definitely Spielberg, and the story was definitely something James Cameron would have really pioneered at. So I felt Christopher Nolan took those three styles and put them together so beautifully that it, it was hard to not like the movie. I will definitely agree with that like i was thinking that the whole movie like that it was very james cameron-esque like these huge sweeping imax scenes 
And it made me think a lot of Kubrick. I want to throw one other thing out there. Something I thought I would hate was the robots. Dude, that was my favorite part. Well, this is what I'm saying. What I thought I would hate was the robots because they were just blocks. They were so, I was like, that's so unimaginative. And then once they started fully incorporating them and like doing all their crazy awesome running and spinning, I was like, oh man, this is the best part of this movie. I was totally going to say that I hate you for beating me to it. I was amazed that a movie finally like did robots, like for real, like their movements seemed real. Like they just seemed what I would think futuristic robots, they were believable. Yeah, but the best part was that the robots were the most human part. You know, Matthew McConaughey and, and everybody had really dramatized, crying, and beautiful stuff, but the robots were the funniest, most human part to me. So at the very beginning, he makes it like this foreshadowing, like something bad's going to happen. These are ex-military robots. Like, nothing ever goes good with robots in a sci-fi movie. Right. Honestly, that's what I was waiting for, too, was one of them to say, like, well, I'm taking over now or something, and I'm really glad they shied away from that sci-fi trope. The other thing I really liked was the panoramic shots where it would just show these beautiful panning shots with the tiny little spaceships and how he made everything seem so scaled. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, the method Christopher Nolan used for the actors were, was completely unheard of in Hollywood because he did this thing where all the visuals for the movie were done first. That way, when the actors looked out a window, it wasn't green screen. There was no acting. They were looking at video or pictures of what was going to be on screen, and they could act, you know, perfectly well. And I think that's that's kind of a brilliant thing. And uh, I, I think Christopher Nolan's kind of innovative in that sense. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. I mean, just have, going into a movie with no expectations or anything interstellar was probably one of the best movies i've ever seen because it's an original story i mean obviously it has a lot of homages to to kubrick spielberg uh and james cameron and stuff like that but he may he takes those and makes it his own uh i mean you're talking great writing great acting great directing great music great visuals great science great science fiction you know, I can forgive the one wishy-washy part where love has to transcend all, you know, in a movie that's beat me to death with facts. And then they're like, well, you have, you know, have to have faith. And I think it, it tried too hard to mix faith and science. Uh, and, I, and the movie, you know, you could tell the movie is very proud of itself for finding some sort of science faithy solution. But at the, in the end, I was like, you know what? I don't like it, but I can move past it because 99% of the movie is amazing. That's pretty much my exact summary of the movie. I mean, the whole movie, all I could think of is this is like the 2001 Space Odyssey of our day. Some of the scenes, you just got lost in nothing, like them going through the black holes and things. Like, nothing's really happening, just music and visuals. And you're just, the whole movie, you're like, whoa. Am I really seeing this? And I get that some people might have problems with it because it definitely had some parts where it got really corny at the end, but I still, I can't not appreciate it. So, um, for me, the movie was a solid five. I mean, it had its hang-ups and little things that we discussed. Um, you definitely have to be able to just spend, to spend your or suspend your disbelief. But for me, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I would probably give it a five as well. I actually went over the idea in my head of giving it a four and a half just because of the little hangups I had and all the weird love stuff and this and that. But, you know, the rest of it totally outweighed the the cons my pros totally outweighed my cons so uh, it's it's a solid five for me and there are many movies which i walk out of the theater and i say that was absolutely brilliant but this one was definitely one of them and it had to be christopher nolan yeah that was the same thing for me it's one of those ones where you leave with an impact like my jaw was still on the floor even though like there were a few silly things like him only talking to his daughter for two seconds um after they meet up again, but 
there's only a movie like that every five years or so. Yeah, and it's a true original, too. Like, I mean, I know the idea was floating around Hollywood before, but, you know, 90% of our movies nowadays are comic book movies based off books, based off other things, you know, nothing is original. So the fact that they came out with this a completely original piece was really, really refreshing. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember just thinking, this is our space odyssey. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely this generation's 2001. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for watching, well, guys. guys. Yeah, you, you, me. <laughs> I, I can. What you said, yeah, yeah. yeah. You Thank you for watching. It? Yeah, I'll go. Go, go on. Thanks for okay. watching, guys. Uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the art and the review. Tell us what you liked about it. Uh, the movie in the comments below. Any music, scenes, characters, anything you want. And subscribe and like. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. See ya.